Say your name with me, please. James R. Powell. Okay, Mr. Powell. Um, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Yes, sir, I have. And how do you know? Well, I got it. You can't see it looking in the video at the corner of that altar right over there? Yes, sir. It's why I prayed through. It took me three days. But when I finally decided I wanted the Holy Ghost worse than I did a lot of other things in my life, and I decided to let go, but I got the Holy Ghost in a revival. It's been a long time, but uh, you know God never changes. So what happened for you to know you had the Holy Spirit? I spoke it down. Okay, okay, super great. And I only ask because some people feel the presence of God on their arms. Oh, and they yeah, yeah, there's, there's no doubt about that. When you get the Holy Ghost, you'll know it. And even after you get the Holy Ghost, you can feel God near you all the time when you when you allow yourself to feel that. It, but it takes a walk with God to get that. Okay, now, you, you said you received it in this corner over here. Yes. Yeah, sure. um, what, what got you to that corner? Were you raised in all my life? I go back... I guess you could say I'm a full generation Pentecostal. Okay. That doesn't mean that I stayed in church all my life. I spent a lot of nights sleeping on slat, old slat pews that didn't have any cushions like we've got today. When you'd get up with creases on your face and uh, you know, you'd go home. I lived in and around the church all my life. Yes, sir. Of course, when I got big enough to make my own decisions, I decided I didn't want to go to church all the time. And I paid you know, when you do things like that, after you become an adult, you pay prices for those choices that you make that are wrong. And I did that. And sometimes the cost is high. Yes. A lot of people can't. A lot of people can say that, and a lot can't. Like we've heard other people say, you know, I've, I've never had got crossways with God, but I have several times. And, uh, and I came when I decided to, to give a, to give my life to God, to surrender, and finally do what I knew was right. It takes time, and you build a walk with God. You don't just come get the Holy Ghost and everything's peaches and creams. You have to build. You have to make that walk with God like it should be. You have to cultivate that. You have to really want fellowship with God for it to come. And if you really want to make right choices in your life, and I'm sitting back here listening to these other people talk, and I'm going to go ahead and say this. A lot of people today claim they have this and claim they have that, but until you get full of the Holy Ghost, you don't really know what walking with God is. You know, they can say that if they want to, but once you get full of the Holy Ghost and you make right choices, God helps you make decisions in your life. Yes. And I can say that with honesty and say it with truth, because you see people make choices and they make mistakes. Yes. The God that I serve will help you make right choices. It might not be the most pleasant one might not be the one that you want for your life, but it's the one that God wants you to have. Yes. And that's when you know you're walking with God. It's when you know you've got something. Yes, sir. How old were you when you received the Holy Spirit? Mm, about 23, 24. Okay. Maybe a little bit younger. I, I told you, I, don't, I, can't, I can't remember dates. That's one of my faults. Don't now, get too complicated. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, so, <clears throat> 24 years of age, you spoke about building that relationship with God. So, in a walk with God is a growth. Okay. You don't get the Holy Ghost and stay where you're at. If I, I garden a lot, if you plant a tree, or plant a bush, or put a seed in the ground, you want it to grow. That's right. And that's what you've got to do is grow. It's a, it's levels. I taught it in Sunday school. You're, there's levels to maturity. We have to mature. We never get fully grown. We never know everything there is to know about God. So it's a constant building. Any for anyone, even my pastor, he he, he learns stuff as he goes along every day. And if we seek the face of God and seek the will of God, we will mature. We will change. We will develop as, and grow to be bigger Christians. That's why I say people cannot mature in a life unless they've really got God. The only way you're going to really get God. It's to really let him in. Yes. Confessing him don't get him. Ah. Confessing God does not get him. You don't just accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. You've got to accept him here. You've got to let him come in. You've got to let the Holy Ghost in. The only way you're going to get that is giving up. Am I getting ahead? No, you're doing great. You've got to repent. You've got to repent. 
Some people call repenting, you know, they just apologize to God and go on, and tomorrow they do the same thing. You can't do that. And if you get the Holy Ghost, you won't do that. <laughs> God will shut you down. And uh, that's where maturity comes in. You have to spiritually mature every day of your life. And that's, what, that's what it's going to take to be saved. That's what it's going to get to take to get from here to there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I see the way you're holding your Bible. You seem to be a man who knows how to use it. How often and what do you say to people as far as their word of God? What do you recommend as far as reading and how much? And, or is reading the Bible important at the all? The plan of salvation is in Acts. Okay. But I heard you ask earlier about someone's favorite scripture, my favorite chapter in the Bible. Now, I love the book of Acts, but I like Hebrews because it's got the faith chapter in it. Okay. Faith is what it's going to take for us to make. Explain. It takes faith to believe in God, that God is who he is. Faith is the essence of everything. Seen and unseen. And that's what it takes to receive the Holy Ghost. You've got to have faith in God. Gotcha. I, I agree with that. I believe that. Last words, sir. Last words. You have the floor. Anywhere the Lord Acts takes. Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized. Receive the Holy Ghost. Evidence speaking in tongues. Yes, sir. There's no other way. None other name. Did anybody be saved by other than Jesus' name, baptism? If you're not baptized in Jesus' name, it ain't scriptural. And I'll challenge anybody that watches my video, and I'll show it to them. Okay, okay. <laughs> Is that throwing the gauntlet down? That's throwing it down. Super great. That's what it says. It, it does, and it took me a while to understand that, and I had never seen it my whole life until finally breaking the Word of God down. If if people want to understand it, if they have a desire here to understand it, they will. That's why the, it's the, the Bible is plain. It says it's given for proof and reproof. That tells me it's for discussion. But the Bible won't contradict itself. What it says, it says. Yes. It don't change. God's infallible. His word's not going to change. Awesome. I mean, he's not going to be this God today and that God tomorrow. He's going to be the same God. He's going to have the same answer. <coughs> Nothing's going to change. What's written in here is written in here. That's why I'm holding it, because it's really dear to me. Awesome. Awesome. Mr. J.R., thank you so much, sir. Mr. J.R., thank you. Mr. J.R., <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you, can, you can edit that out if you want to. <laughs> I'm going to let it ride, sir. Praise the Lord.